Right now, John Trapper is joining me. He is the writer and producer of The Golden Gaze, which is coming to Miami Beach. And John, thanks uh, so much for taking some time out to talk to me. Oh, I'm glad to do it. I'm so excited. I mean, right off the bat, the title, The Golden Gaze, grabs you. And then when you start to read a little bit about it, you go, wait a minute. I thought it was The Golden Girls, but it's The Golden Gaze. And I want to know how you came up with this show. Well, all right. First, I should tell you the original title was Four Guys Who Moved to Florida to Live Life as Golden Girls. But as you probably guessed, that was too long for a lot of a lot of graphic purposes. So... We try to figure out what to name it based on the content, which is uh, the content is for guys who moved to Florida to live life as golden girls. The end result is the golden gaze. And what it is is four men who are uh, obsessed with the, the beloved girls, and they can't get them out of their heads, and they identify so strongly with them, they, they don't know how to, how to uh, go through a day without, you know, saying one of the lines from the show or something. So the therapist, who is very over it, decides, here's what we're going to do. We're, we're going to move you guys down to Miami, and you're going to just be the Golden Girls, and it'll make you realize how stupid you are, and, and it will all go away. So that's what they do. But they find that it's not as easy as, as it looks. And so they go to this therapist who suggests that they actually dress up as the characters of the Golden Girls, right? Yes. And each one of them has their own obsession, uh, obsession. so they they probably already own this stuff anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so somebody has the Dorothy costume in their closet, somebody has the Rose costume, the Blanche, and the Sophia. And uh, the therapist says, well, this this is such a such an obsession, you've got to get it out of your system, so to speak. You're going to become the Golden Girls, you're going to move to Miami Beach, and you're going to live out this fantasy, right? Absolutely. And so now here you are coming to Miami Beach uh, with the show. And it's it's sort of like life imitating art and art imitating life, huh? You know, it's it's gotten really weird, I have to say. (laughs) uh, (laughs) I'm not even sure what's going on at this point. We're uh, we're just really excited. You know, sometimes I look back at, you know, I think it was 15 years ago or so that I was down there in Miami with my uh, partner at the time, and we we were just going to all the sites that supposedly Sophia and Dorothy and Blanche and Rose go, and, you know, Wolfie's was open at the time, we, we ate there, we, anything we could do then to emulate. I just blocks. saw the, I just saw an episode the other night when they mentioned Wolfie's. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it's tough to, to actually be going there and have this show, it's hysterical to me. And does the house that they used, uh, you know, the exterior, does that still exist, or did it exist when you visited those years ago? It Well, I, I understand that that house that they used for the exterior is actually here in L.A. Oh, I and didn't honest, know that. You, you know, they, they, they do all kinds of tricks like that in Hollywood, so it's very <laughs> <interesting>. <laughs> it, You know, they, they, they took a shot of that. A lot of the other shots were actually from uh, sites in Miami. There, there was a banquet hall that they used for like every, uh, you know, every time they were going to a function. It was at this community center that you guys have down there, and that we were able to find years ago. And there are there are quite a few shots that they that they used that actually were from Miami as well. So. Now, so uh, you seem to know a lot about the the series. I remember somebody asking me. Which neighborhood they supposedly lived in? Did you ever? Do you know that the answer to that question? It, a lot of it was implied. I mean, you get the sense now that they lived, uh, you know, a couple blocks away from the beach. And if you, you know, if you're from South Beach, you know that that just doesn't make any sense hmm. because I'll say that they lived in looks very suburban, and so they kind of jumbled a lot of stuff to make it work for, uh, you know, for the show, but. You know, like most people wouldn't have that big sprawling house in South Beach. Um, you know, the, the, the women would actually be piled on top of each other, I think, if they were literally living on their fixed incomes in South Beach. But, <laughs> um, you know, so they're, which is kind of a, a, one of the jokes of the show. But they, they, che- they cheated a lot, basically. And so you came up with this idea after this trip to South Florida, to South Beach. You came up with the idea to write the show. Is that right? Right. And it was just, you know, I write for fun a lot. I, I write to escape. And I've been, you know, I, I wrote the actual original draft probably 12 years ago. And just 
thought it was funny and got it out of my system and, you know, kept it on my computer. I would revisit it occasionally mm. and, you know, the show would come back and would go, go off. And uh, But after the, the death of B. Arthur, um, when I realized 50% of them were gone, I just decided, you know, it's time. And and my show is not only, you know, there's been quite a few gay drag versions of the Golden Girls out there. Mm. And and I like to think that mine is not like that. Mine, mine really is a tribute more than it is a spoof, I think. Okay. Um, and it's funny, I've been told that, you know, some of the people involved in the original show view it that way, too. They left feeling very... Uh, you know, very appreciated for what they did. Oh, well, that's an excellent uh, that's an excellent way to put it. And who would have thought all these years later the show is still sort of in our minds and our culture and we still love it? And, uh, of course, gay men just adore it and uh, have to have every season on DVD. And, and it's, it's on several times a day and it changed networks a few years ago. And it's still sort of a powerhouse. It's one of those shows you can keep going back to and enjoying over and over again. Who thought of that? Who would have thunk? No, I don't mm-hmm. know. No, but you know, it's. Uh, I know that there's probably a lot of people living in some nice homes in the Hollywood Hills that were connected with the, you know, just the concept from the beginning, and that's all it takes. So. Well, this is a musical parody of our favorite sitcom, The Golden Girls, and it's it's called The Golden Gaze. And um, tell us a little bit about the musical part of it. Well, what I had done was that was actually sort of an afterthought, and that's uh, as a as a playwright. I have, you know, I have a desire to have successful shows, and I know that if you just give a little of everything to the audience, you can generally make them happy. So I decided I I wanted to put some numbers into it, and then I I looked at the age demographic that would likely be coming to the show. And so I just chose show tunes that were from the period that that demographic um, would like, and then I just uh, wrote you know, parodies. And the, what what demographic are we talking about? Do you that generally you think might appreciate this show? Uh, well, I mean, we've been surprised at that. So right. I should say that it's, it's been a, it's actually a lot of women have come out to see the show. Mm-hmm. Um, but the demographic I was going for was pretty much golden gaze. And <laughs> if if you had read my uh, original, uh, you know, pitch on the show, it was that it's dedicated to. Um, older gay men, and that's uh, 25 and older. I've always loved how I remember the terror when I was 20 of, of turning 22. So that's, <laughs> so that's you know, just because I saw how respected we were by our younger, uh, <laughs> yeah. our, our younger generation. But I think that's changing, actually, and that's one of the, the things I, I like about this show is one of the messages is that, you know, we can, you know, and I thought that the Golden Girls did too, is, you know, they, they really said you can be old and still sexy and still active in your community and all the things that they were doing on that show actually were, I think, some very positive imagery. Oh, absolutely. And it seems like even the younger generation of gay men are are still in love with this show. They, yeah, yeah. I mean, if, if you look at our Facebook site and that sort of thing, you'll see a lot of 21-year-olds you know, members, and they quote lines from the show over and over again. Was the world premiere last September in Los Angeles? Is that was that the world premiere? Yes, that was the world premiere, and you know, and it's not going. It, it was never intended to be a, a big, big show. It, it was really a, sort of a cabaret. Mm-hmm. Um, we used the space here in LA that's wonderful um, called the Cavern Club Theater, and it's a small fifty-seat theater that they can sometimes cram eighty people into, and. <laughs> Has a Mexican restaurant above it, and, <laughs> and a lot of a lot of uh, gay-oriented theater premieres there. And so we were just having a blast with it, and um, it just you know the the press and the you know the audience has just kept on coming. So I I was almost forced to to bring it back up again. And. Who-